About 1400 years ago, a man appeared in the Arab Peninsula, claiming to be the prophet of God. And a little girl was forced to be the wife of that self-proclaimed prophet. Early in the 7th century, the city of Mecca, in today's Saudi Arabia, was the center of idol worship and pilgrimage for the polytheists of the entire Arab Peninsula. Because of its housing, the holy temple of Kaaba, that contained 360 idol gods, worshipped in the region. In the year 613 or 614 AD, Oh, Brother Abu Bakr, it's a girl! Wow! <laughs> Congratulations, Brother Abu Bakr. Congratulations, Abu Bakr. Thank you, brothers. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. I'm so happy. Thanks to Allah for blessing me with another daughter. Thank you so much, my wife, for blessing me with another beautiful daughter. All praise to merciful Allah. What name should we give to our beautiful princess? She looks like an angel. We will name her Aisha. That's a beautiful name. I'm going to the Kaaba to give thanksgiving to the Lord. Aisha became a remarkable woman in history thanks to the birth of a baby boy in the same city about 43 years earlier, in 570 AD. He was Muhammad, the prophet of Islam and the most influential person in history. Muhammad's father, Abdullah, had died before his birth. Mother Amina gave infant Muhammad away to a Bedouin woman named Halima. Halima raised him in the desert until the age of five and then returned him to Amina. Amina died after a year, and his next guardian and grandfather, Abdul Mutalib, died two years later. This brought eight-year-old Muhammad under the care of his loving uncle, Abu Talib. Whence, he had to work as a shepherd and help with uncle's caravan trade. Muhammad remained unmarried until the age of 25, extremely uncommon and unexpected in those days. Although his proposal to marry his cousin, Umhani, was rejected by Abu Talib. When aged about 25, Muhammad was employed by a twice-widowed rich merchant woman named Khadija to conduct her caravan trade. On his very first travel to Syria with Khadija's caravan, Great, Muhammad, my Sarah, you are ready to go? Come, listen to me. Sir, remember my instructions. Now go. May Allah make this caravan a blessed one. Okay, ma'am. Bye. Bye, ma'am. They should be returning any time. Don't know why I feel so restive this time. Oh, ma'am! We're home! Oh, my Sarah! Oh, Mohammed! You're back? I'm waiting eagerly. How did it go? Perfect, ma'am! You have great news! Tell me, what is it? Tell me! In Syria, Brother Muhammad was resting under a tree. A Christian monk saw him and exclaimed, None but a prophet ever sat beneath this tree. Fantastic! You have more good news, ma'am. What is it? Tell me, quick. Muhammad was riding his camel in front of me. The sun was very hot. And I saw two angels shielding him from the sun. Excellent. This is the news my cousin Waraka is eagerly waiting for. I am rushing to give him the good news. Khadija's cousin, Waraka ibn Naufal, was a Christian scholar who had deeply studied and mastered the Gospels and translated it for the idolatrous Arabs to learn the Unitarian teachings of Jesus. He was also anticipating the coming of a prophet for his people, like Moses to the Hebrews, for turning them away from polytheism, and used to say, How long? How long?
why you are rushing like this, Khadija. Great news, Brother Waraka. If this is true, Khadija, verily Muhammad is the prophet of this people. I knew that a prophet is expected for this people. His time has come. Thereafter, Khadija proposed to marry Muhammad. And 25-year-old Muhammad married 40-year-old Khadija in 695 AD. In the solemnization ceremony, Waraka eagerly offered her hand to Muhammad, ahead of her real guardian, saying, O people of Quraysh, I have given Khadija, daughter of Khuwailid, in marriage to Muhammad ibn Abdullah for the dower of 400 dinars. Soon, Muhammad, with obvious consent of Khadija, gave up commercial activities and started spending time in a cave of the nearby Hira mountain. And 15 years later, while asleep in the cave, he allegedly saw in his dream that some invisible being was forcing him to recite some verses, who later showed up in the sky and said, O Muhammad, thou art the apostle of God, I am Gabriel. Khadija, my wife, see what happened in the cave today. I'm so scared. What is it, my dear husband? Don't worry, my husband. God will not be unkind to you. This may be the day we have been eagerly waiting for, for many years now. I will rush to Brother Waraka to give the news. Oh, Brother Waraka, I have great news for you. What is it, Khadija? Holy, holy, it is Angel Gabriel who came to Moses before. Lo, Muhammad is the prophet of this people. Where is Muhammad? I will go and congratulate him. My wait has finally ended. He will later go to the Kaaba for offering thanksgiving to the Lord. Oh, Muhammad, what is it that happened? Surely, you are the prophet of this people. It is the great angel Gabriel who came to you. Congratulations, Muhammad. I will support you in your mission. There started Muhammad's prophetic mission for preaching the monotheistic religion of Islam in Mecca in 610 AD, adopting Allah, the supreme deity of the Arabs, as his sole god. His first converts were his wife Khadija, freed slave and adopted son Zaid, and nine-year-old cousin and adopted son Ali. Waraka, despite guiding him to launch his prophetic mission, never embraced Islam and died as a Christian two to three years later. The next convert, first from outside his family circle, was Abu Bakr, a rich merchant and close friend from his caravan trading days. At the beginning, Muhammad could preach and convert people freely. Amidst these happenings, Aisha was born in 613 or 614 AD in the house of Abu Bakr, Muhammad's steadfast supporter and the richest and most respectable among his three dozen or so disciples. Muhammad could gain only about 40 converts during the first four odd years, which slowed after the first wave. Very few people believe that Muhammad, who grew up just like any ordinary boy of his age group, could be a prophet of God. Frustrated, Muhammad started insulting their gods in his verses and words, which angered them. Muhammad also laid a claim on the Holy Kaaba Temple as exclusively belonging to his god, and wanted the polytheistic gods therein be not worshipped anymore. Annoyed, the pagan families of his followers started putting pressure on them for returning to their ancestral faith. The slave converts were subjected to beating and torture by their pagan masters, but the torture was not life-threatening, and Abu Bakr paid up to set them free. In the sixth year of his mission, late 615, early 616 AD, Two high-profile conversions, namely of Muhammad's uncle Hamza, later the Lion of Allah, and of Umar, later the second Caliph of Islam, created a new wave to swell his community to about 80 male heads. In the face of the Meccan's effort to stop Islam, Muhammad sent away the majority of his followers, 83 males and 18 females, to Abyssinia. Only the influential few stayed behind. Islam was breaking up families, separating children from parents, and dividing the community. And Muhammad was persistent as ever in insulting their gods. So, desperate pagan elders tried to reach a compromise with him, that both his Allah and the pagan deities be jointly worshipped in the Kaaba. 
Muhammad rejected the proposal after initially accepting it with the release of two verses, which became known as the Satanic Verses. Eventually, in late 616 or early 617 AD, the pagans imposed boycott on Muhammad's community and his pagan supporters by banning intermarriages and business transactions with them. They were locked away in his pagan uncle and protector Abu Talib's quarter. Thirty-three of his followers soon returned from Abyssinia and joined in. The boycott continued for nearly three years, hardly anything reaching them from the outside. Yet, some of the sympathetic pagans used to send in food and provisions quietly at the dead of night. They also tried to annul the boycott. The boycott left them economically crippled and stricken with hardship and hunger. But Muhammad refused to concede any ground and kept rallying his followers to weather the trial. 